I have a scary story for you today that I totally forgot about when I did the video last week telling you about all the scary scenarios I've had living on the road solo over the last seven and a half years. I may have told you this one very early on. It happened it might have happened on one of my uh, practice trips even before I was full time and way before I ever even thought about making videos. So today I'm going to share. Actually, I've got two more scary stories. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find your own. Hey, friendlies, I'm Carolyn. Welcome to my life living in an RV. It's tick season here in New York all summer long. No ticks. Now we've got ticks. No tick here. Anyway, yeah, I was laying in bed the night I published that video and all of a sudden this memory came flashing back. I'm like, oh my gosh, how could I forget that one? It was the first really scary thing that ever happened to me. I literally got run out of town. This was freaky. This was really freaky. And then the second one I want to tell you about isn't scary so much as just freaky ridiculous. It was a little scary maybe in the moment. I think I was more incredulous in the moment. All right, let's set the scene. I'm in Matilda. I really cannot remember if I was full-time yet or if it was one of my practice, mostly stealth campings from the San Francisco Bay Area. I was just going within a couple miles of the Bay Area and I was up in Sacramento and I remember at one point getting kicked out of a strip mall. I was trying to hide. I was trying to hide. I was trying to stealth camp uh, in a strip mall in Sacramento. And there was a bar in the strip mall and security came and knocked on the door and told me I had to leave. They said, you don't want to stay here anyway. It's not safe. I think that was a different night. Anyway, I was in the Sacramento area kind of feeling things out because my goal in the beginning was to still uh, see clients once a month, once a quarter, whatever they needed, and just kind of boondock in a couple hour radius of the San Francisco Bay Area. So I was going out and doing some investigating. Well, I ended up in a suburb of Sacramento. I think it was Murrieta, I think it was called. It's 2016, April, May-ish, 2016. So the world is already starting to get a little kind of wonky, right? And I found this, I don't remember what it was, state land maybe, or national forest. I can't remember what it was, but it, or a park. It might've been like a county park. There was a dirt road. It was very rural, nothing but farmland in this little town with like a one stoplight. And there was a dirt road, uh, dirt road you turned off you dirt road and then you enter the park and i think i parked on the i think it was a gravel road actually and then it goes into the park and i parked at the entrance i think it was like a an open gate or something i parked and i walked in to see if my rv could make it remember matilda was 29 feet i walked in and discovered very quickly that i was not going to be able to make it into this park, into this public land, whatever it was. And it was late in the day. And so I decided that I'm like, okay, this is my new life. Let's figure it out. The road going into this public land was wide enough. I pulled way over on the side and it was like late afternoon when I got there, still very light out. And I pulled way over to the side and I figured, you know what, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if any traffic comes down this road and I'll get a feel for it. That's one of my tips for safely stealth camping or boondocking, get there early and kind of get a feel for it. So I was there the rest of the afternoon, made dinner, you know, took Capone for a walk. It was beautiful back there and uh, went to bed. So it was 10 o'clock maybe. All of a sudden, 10 o'clock, I start hearing, and I think I did tell this story once because I got a lot of crap, <laughs> because I always get a lot of crap, but this is a fact. This is a fact. I don't, whether you like it or not, these are facts. So I'm laying in bed and I hear cars. It's dark. It's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. It's late, maybe midnight. I don't remember. It was late. And there's car after car after car after car trucks actually going into this public land and the first few cars I'm like okay this is really strange but then after like 10 I look out my window and they're big huge trucks with big huge American flags lit up you know with the fancy LED lights and yeah one after another these big giant trucks with big American flags and they're going in 
And I noticed, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to lay here, let them do their thing. They started to get more aggressive, zooming by my window, literally like at one point, one stopped right at the end of my RV, stopped, revved their engine, and then sped past me. And I looked out and they're they there were two trucks and again this was seven and a half years ago so i'm trying to remember i think there were a couple trucks up near the entrance just sitting there one was going this way one was going this way they were talking to each other and it just got more and more aggressive and i was like i gotta go this is not ending it's a never-ending parade and they're getting more aggressive i really got the feeling they did not want me there so i packed up and this went on for 25 minutes, maybe a half hour, because I kept laying there thinking this isn't about me. They're just going in there. They're doing their thing. But more and more trucks were speeding past. One sped past and did a donut and came back again and went back again. They were intimidating me, without a doubt. They did not want me there. So I, I packed everything up, hopped in my, uh, unfortunately, and maybe this is where I got the tip to always point your nose in your escape direction. My nose was not pointed in my escape route. It was pointed toward the park. Uh, by the time I hopped in my seat, it was clear, except for one guy. He had sped up, turned around, and he was sitting right at the stop sign at the end of the road. I got in my, I got in my driver's seat. I turned around. I he just sat there with his lights on and everything. And I just stopped at the stop sign. And I mean, I was scared. I was really shaking up. This was my first really kind of weird, scary scenario. And so I left and he followed me. I went back toward town, I think, to go back toward the interstate. He followed me all the way to the interstate. No shit. He followed me all the way to the interstate. So that was freaking scary. And I think that I'm pretty sure that's where I got the tip to point your nose in the direction of your escape route. And a lot of you comment that, oh, your nose isn't pointed in your escape route. You know, now that I've been on the road as long as I have, I realize that I don't really always have to follow my own safety advice. I just go with my gut. If an area feels safe and my best uh, orientation isn't with my nose pointing out because I want my door to face a certain way, then I don't worry about it, you know, and I don't put two chairs out. I don't put big boots out. It's funny. I get a lot of people commenting on my channel, giving me the safety advice that I first published on YouTube seven years ago. <laughs> it's like come full, full circle with people advising me with my own advice. And uh, I think that's kind of funny. But yeah, they followed me out of town. I got on the interstate and I don't remember. Maybe, maybe I went to the strip mall after that. That might be what happened. I might have ended up in the strip mall after that. And I asked the guard at the strip mall who kicked me out if he knew any place I could go. And I think he said Walmart. I think I ended up at a Walmart. And I had scoped the Walmart, I think, but I didn't like what it looked like. It was pretty run down, a lot of homeless looking people there. So yeah, 2016, I do remember talking about it because I think a lot of you said, you know, white supremacist stuff. I mean, and that's a very, uh, that area, Sacramento, Sacramento area and, and a lot of Northern California isn't what a lot of people think when they think uh, California. I mean, yeah, there are definitely the liberal cities, but you get outside of the cities and it's not at all. I don't know what was going on, but uh, probably 20, 25 big trucks with big flags, not all of them, of course, and big lights and intimidating me for being there. Even with California Place, they did not want me there. So that scared the hell out of me. It really did. And uh, the second one but first, I want to thank Mint Mobile for sponsoring today's video. And just a quick reminder that time is running out for you to switch to Mint Mobile for just $15 a month for three months. Mint Mobile runs on the nation's largest 5G network, so you do not have to worry about sacrificing coverage to save a bundle on your cell phone. I got to tell you, everybody that has left comments, almost everybody, has had nothing but wonderful things to say about Mint Mobile. I mean, $15 a month, completely unlimited data, text, and all of that, but it runs out on October 
first. You can even try it out. You can look at this. You can start a free trial. So if you're worried that it may not work where you live, you can log on now and start a free trial. And if you have a compatible phone, you can get an e-SIM card and you can start saving on a new cell phone plan with Mint Mobile in as little as 15 minutes. And don't worry, if you do not have a compatible cell phone, they will mail you a SIM card and you'll get it in a day or two and start saving. So be sure to use the link in the video description below to start saving on your cell phone bill today. Uh, the second one I want to tell you about is kind of similar, uh, but before I do, do me a favor, and if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell for notifications so you never miss a new video. Thank you so much. And also, just a quick note, you know, thank you for those of you who have patience with the sponsored segments of my videos uh, I've talked before the last couple of years, a lot of creators are talking about how YouTube revenue is just in the toilet. And because this is a full-time job, I need to pay the bills. And uh, I try to only bring you products and services that I think are going to benefit you, that are going to be interesting for you. And I try to make the 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 integrations fun, just like the, the the one I did on Sunday night. I try to make it fun and relevant to my RV life. So I just want to say thank you again, everybody who is here and helps in all the ways that you do to support my channel, including not complaining about the commercials that pay my my bills. All right. The, the last one, and again, this wasn't really scary so much as just, wow, you know, I lived in a bubble and I've said this a couple of times. We all live in bubbles. I think it's really interesting that a lot of people are have this vision of a lot of people, rural people have this vision that cities are crime ridden and there's nothing but liberal policies that are killing people and there's crime everywhere and people are shooting drugs on the streets in the wide open and they're dangerous and all of that. Well, the same goes for city people. City people get out of their bubble and they go into the country and they have the same fears. Everybody's got guns. Everybody's a white supremacist. So I think there's a lesson there that we are all in some ways maybe influenced, maybe even brainwashed by what the media tells each of us. And that maybe if we just get out and meet each other, it's not really that's it, it, what we're seeing. But in this case, I was in, I feel like I was in Washington again, 2016. I still had California plates. So I was definitely in Matilda and I was definitely on the road full time. And it was later in 2016 closer to the election. I think I was in Washington and I'm in a grocery store parking lot. I'm inside my RV doing whatever, putting groceries away. And I hear this ruckus outside, this guy uh, yelling. And I look out my window and there's a guy in a little car, literally doing circles around my RV, screaming, Hillary for prison, Hillary for prison, Hillary for prison. And again, it wasn't really scary. I was just like, are you, I mean, in a, it was scary, but not in the, like, I'm in danger, scary kind of way, but scary in the, holy shit, I got to drive around the country with California plates, and is this what I'm going to have to deal with because the world has just gone nuts? So it was scary in that way, and I'm going to be honest with you, when I got Matil when I got Phoenix, my new RV, I was, I was uh, relieved in a lot of ways to get rid of my California plates because there is such a stigma about California. And I was afraid some guy circling my RV in a parking lot screaming Hillary for Clinton is relatively harmless, right? But what if, again, the whole bubble thing, right? The people in the country think the city is dangerous and all the city people are criminals and the city people go out and they think all the country people are a certain way. And my concern was that these, I'd go out in the country with my California plates and that people would har harass me at the very least. Of course, it never happened. It never happened because again, a lot of the crap we see on the media is sensationalized and the point is to make us afraid. Those are my two last scary stories. It's funny because a lot of you mentioned uh, stories that I didn't think were as scary as the three I mentioned in the last video, but I'll put the link to that below in case you missed it and also at the end. And thank you again so much for uh, hanging out with me and being a part of my journey. And uh, we'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free. <laughs>